Okay, Raja, so it's like I've been making all of these videos and stuff. <laughs> and here goes another one. <laughs> I just wanted to actually make a couple of minor corrections in my other video. Um, I actually managed to see some of the highlights um, today of your match yesterday, and um, I saw I saw the errors you were making. Some of them, a good five or six of them, and for me, yeah, you were hitting some of the balls out. I think that's something that obviously can be corrected, um, and that might might be fueled by nerves and adrenaline. I'm not, you know, 100% sure that that happens every single time, but um, some of the points. Like you were, you were just going for it, and I loved your attitude. Um, you know, you were in all the way. You were described in an article as being like fighting all the way until the end. So I really commend you for that. And um, it's one thing to hear things on the hear a match on the radio and look at it through Twitter. So I have to apologize a little bit. And then it's another thing to like see it and go a little bit like, oh, okay. But um, I also saw, you know, you had a great attitude afterward. You're talking about being motivated for next season. Or at least that was the title in an, an article that I read. I never noticed that you personally said that. But I know that you would, maybe you sounded motivated to the reporter. And that's why they titled the article that way. Now, Roger Moore Fed, uh, Federer more uh, motivated than ever, which I love. Um, but <laughs> you didn't actually say that. But you were talking about your schedule and um, next year in 2013. Um and getting in more practice time, so that's really good. Uh, faster courts also, too, one in faster courts. When I first read that title, I'm like, really? Are you just trying to, don't tell me you like saying something just to try to suit your own game, but given all the information that you wrote, uh, that you said, um, it was very informative, and um, it sounded very fair, and it sounded like it wasn't anything to benefit your own game, but just to make the game of tennis much more interesting. Um, that's why I really like you. Like, you just never, like, um, I almost curse, but I won't. You just, you're just straight up honest, and um, I love that. Um, so, so um, yeah, and you talked about how it would uh, create more and more, um, I guess, offensive play in tennis. So that was, that was really interesting and uh, less ability to defend now. That's, that's interesting to me. Um, I guess I will have to go back to the Sampras period and uh, Agassi period and look at that kind of tennis because there were certain times I remember being very young and seeing Sanford's play and for me it was just I remember I think I talked about this in another one of my videos there's this one I think it was Crycheck and Sanford's that I always like kind of remember but um at Wimbledon and uh it was just like a little bit on the boring side although I kept watching it um because the ball wasn't in play that much it just was like sorry hard maybe hit one back and then returned and then the point was done you know, so I wonder, you know, how tennis would be on uh, this faster, these faster courts. Although I know you're more, your play is more suited toward faster courts. I know that people have always said you prefer faster courts, and um, um, so it's all, it's all interesting. But I love. Uh, let me get back to this. I love the fact that you were going for yours, you know, and obviously you are. There are going to be um, mistakes when you're really playing to go for the win, to go for the kill, and I love it, I love it. Um, so I guess I did give you some props there. Um, the only thing is, again, you know, just the obvious stuff, like you said, probably more practice so that, um, you know, when you are going for um, strikes and things like that, um, that you are making sure that they're not, go they're not going out of, out of bounds, but um, obviously. But, um, yeah, no, overall, great, great effort. I'm really going to make sure that I watch uh, this video, uh, watch that match and over the next couple of days. No one's uploaded it yet, so I'm going to wait, and I'll, I'll watch it and then probably make another video. These videos are clearly helping me right now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I think, I think um, you know, you looked good, obviously. There was some killer tennis in there people were so excited about. Oh, my God, they called um, one shot that you made. They, it's a hot shot. Um, it was called, like, a backpedaling 
backpedaling shot that you made that was just amazing, like a backpedaling volley or something like that. And um, yeah, I think that one's going down in history books. But what else is new with you? You history writer, you. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I just want to say good luck. Um, I made this whole long video today. Um, I think some of it's a little irrelevant, but I think some of it's still worth watching. But, um, yeah, I think you should definitely, um, definitely still, I, I love the attitude, like that assassin attitude um, that I've seen in all of the plays and stuff like that. Um, but the only thing is, like, um, now to get it to the point where you're sharpshooting um, as well, you know that accuracy is in there, and um, you have accuracy overall, obviously, but um, you know, just making sure that that ball stays in. And I, I don't know, is it me or whatever? But why do I always feel like some of the courts are shorter than the others? I mean, I've felt this for years now, but. Somebody said that the, the courts are um, basically the same. But for me, Wimbledon's court looks longer than other courts. The HP, you know, the WTF finals, I mean, that court looks shorter than other courts. Um, yeah, I don't know how to explain it. I think, I think Miami and the U.S. Open court is a little long. Even the Australian Open, I feel like a World Tour Finals court is shorter. Um, God, you know, if anybody's watching this and they're interested, just comment on that. You know, like, I need some edification on that. <laughs> I imagine that some of the courts are not shorter, but why does it look like that to me? Um, so, anyway. Um, yeah, and Perhaps uh, that has something to do with this, um, what you say is a faster court and a slower court. I don't know. But you know what? At the end of the day, if someone bothers to comment on this, I'll know. I'll be, I'll be educated. Um, I always thought that faster court and slower court has to do with um, um, what's actually in the surface, with the actual um, components of the actual surface. So I don't know. But um, I just had the thought that perhaps a faster and slower court could also be the fact that a court is slightly longer or shorter. I'm not totally sure. Anyway, so um, listen, good job. You looked great. You looked great. So just keep it up. Loved your attitude um, afterward. Obviously, you weren't that happy. Who the hell would be? But um, I still think it's a great job. That you did and you just keep plugging away making sure that you can um, eventually obviously get rid of some of those errors but I saw one one error and I uh, just want you to know like when I say unforced um, errors it's not like I'm trying to advocate something to say like oh my gosh you can never make errors and oh my gosh you can never make unforced errors but um, to just constantly assess and figure out you know It'd be great even if just figure out, well, what's gotten me into a crunch? Like, what, what do I make the most unforced errors on? And then just notice, like, do you cringe a little bit? Or do you, you know, like, if, if a certain ball is hit from a certain angle, do you notice that you get a little flustered or anything like that? Or, I don't know, you know. I didn't see that, um, but, I mean, it's my first instinct to figure out which shots and angles you make the most unforced errors on and just figure out if it's just a, a thing you need to touch upon in general or it's something you need to work through in your feelings um, like you get you know like it comes and you're like oh okay which way am I gonna hit it uh, that way oh error you know um and just see see what happens and then um you know I saw a couple of backhands where you know of course Djokovic like hit the ball um really hard and um you responded but it was an over you know it was over response and the ball ended up going past him out of bounds so i think it's i don't know what do you think of this if it sounds realistic but i think it's good to just um maybe even practice that a little bit you know because it's a lot to, i would imagine it's a lot to balance number one first of all you have to deal with your own feelings you're busy trying to return the ball you're busy trying to do everything correct but also you know like a backhand and if somebody is like hitting it into your body it's already making it an awkward shot so I mean for me personally if 
you know, given the, no- the amount of tennis knowledge I'm working with right now, <laughs> um, I almost made a self-deprecating comment, but I'm just going to try to let that go. Um, I would, you know, practice that shot, too. Like, just have one of those tennis shooters just... I know you, I know you apparently hate drills. Okay, I get it. But um, I would totally, like... Just practice that shot, like how to create when the ball is coming in so hard and you're in a crunch, you know. I think that's how you're going to win Roger Federer, like just remembering um, how to perform when you don't have time because that's what Burger says, you know, you don't play in your comfort zone when you don't have time. And I think, I think it looks to me like you've been really doing that well. Like you were all in um, from what I could see of the, the bit of – the 11 minutes of highlights that I saw today, like, you were all in, so I'm really proud of you, like, you looked great, it didn't look like you were, like, giving up on anything, or that you were, like, mentally subdued, even though I still, um, want to suggest you working with mental, your mental fitness, I'm telling you, you're gonna notice a complete difference, like, Unless maybe somehow you're already doing it and you're like, oh, world girl, I'm taking your advice. Hello. (laughs) So, um, anyway, um, yeah, I think, um, I think that, um, you should, you know, you know, I'm proud of you that you were all in. You really, really looked like you were all in. Like, you know, you were just trying every shot and that's all you can do is play your best, do your best. But um, it'd be interesting, again, like, to do some drills where, you know, you get one of those, you know, the tennis things that shoot the ball out. Just shoot the ball right into your backhand. Like, just shoot it and just practice responding, but not over, you know, like, over, over responding, you know. And do it on the, if, if that world tour court is shorter than a normal court, I would practice on a short court. No, I, yeah, that's probably even better, just practicing on a short court, you know, and making sure you don't get it over over the line or whatever um so you know and also working with your feelings like where do you go do you cringe when when it happens or maybe you don't cringe physically but you cringe you know mentally inside or something like that but you know these are all things to just talk about and um as usual you can see i could sit here and talk forever these are probably like start a blog but i'm like a lazy or something to a certain extent I mean I'm really busy but you know sometimes like I like tennis so much why don't I just like start a blog I don't really have all the time to like watch all the matches anymore you know what I mean there was one point in time but um unfortunately I wasn't working um full time and um I had time to like watch the entire US Open and uh, entire Australian open one time that's a that's a long time here in America um, to be unemployed but not in this economy but um yeah it just it's so it's so time consuming um, but speaking of like some people and you probably already know this but some people wanted to take the U.S. Open uh, I'm sorry the World Tour Finals they, they wanted they wanted the the World War Finals between you and Joker to go five sets. I know you would have taken a, that mess in five sets. Like, you would have c- corrected and just run away with it. Um, but, you know, at the same time, Joker said something interesting. Um, speaking of fathers, um, apparently his father's sick. He must have had a tough year, like his grandfather dying, and now his father's sick. He didn't say what his father had, but it sounded like something kind of serious. Um, you know, some sort of illness that he's been battling for a while. That's what it seemed like to me. So he said he was putting, he was all in that match for his father. So when you come from an emotional standpoint like that too, and you have history with someone and you want to win the match, you know, you're going to throw it all in. And you have to look at like where he was coming from um, and that you were still able to, to play extremely successfully against him. Uh, given that he was really like fighting and all out for uh, his father 
So, um, yeah, that's something to really, really think about, um, the magnitude of your effect, the enormity of how you're playing against a, mon a man who's emotionally charged. You know, anyone's going to do almost anything um, for their father, especially a father who's sick. So, um, you know, I really wish him well with that. You know, my blessings are with his family. I think he's going to do so much this year. But um, look, at, look at what you guys are bringing out on each other. You know what I mean? And uh, he's, just, he's just really good to see um, how he pumps himself up mentally and stuff like that and how he comes from behind. Gives a lot of people hopes to just be like, don't ever quit. Like Winston Churchill says, I think Winston Churchill has the best freaking quotes in the world that I've ever seen. So many just kick-ass quotes from him, but you know, it's just the most famous one is never, 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 never give up. Never, never give up. Um, and that's what he does. Um, and then he said something very interesting, like he was trying to convince himself, even though he was behind and down, he was, he was like, I was out there, I was trying to convince myself that I could eventually turn this around. Um, you know, and he was saying, I experienced Roger's aggressivity or whatever. I mean, that's not a word, obviously, in English, but it's actually a good word and it makes sense. It actually is an understandable error in English to say that, aggressivity or whatever. He said, I experienced his, you know, his aggression, his, his aggression before, essentially. Um, so... You know, he, he's just learning how to ride out the wave, you know what I mean? Ride out the Roger Federer storm, the Roger Federer tsunami, and just like, if I ride it out, and you know, maybe I'll, maybe he'll get some errors, maybe I'll turn the tide my way, so you just keep keeping the attitude, same attitude, that um, that is the approach that these guys are understanding when they get in a match with you is that they're going to have to ride out your wrath, you know, um, before they can do anything. And if they, if anything's going to happen, a lot of times it's going to have to be because you made errors. You know, they held their game up, but that you also are assisting them by making errors. So um, it's interesting. Look at this. I can sit here and talk to you all day. Marathon mania. Um, I'm definitely probably contending to be one of your biggest fans ever. <laughs> All right, so I'm out of here. Good luck with everything. And once again, um, you have so much to be proud of. And I loved your interview saying that you had a fantastic season. Great, great attitude. Just keep it up. You know, you know, get yourself rested. Have a good two weeks. I heard then you're going to be down in Brazil. I wish, damn, I wish I could be down there with you guys, like just seeing that exhibition match. I know that's going to be fun. I know it's like such a great country, probably going to have amazing food there, and in Colombia, oh my god, you're going to Colombia too, right? Probably really good food down there, Yum. oh my god, um, I like Latin food, so. what's your favorite food, Roger Federer? <laughs> you know what's one, some of my favorite foods, oh my god, I'm like going off on a tangent right now, talking tangent, clearly I'm bored, right? I have work to do, but I'm sitting here talking because this is just fun to do, and keep my mind off of all the distress. Vietnamese food is the bomb. Um, I love Mexican food. Italian food is good. <laughs> I love Latin food. And then being in America, you know, especially in New York, you have um, populations from Puerto Rico and uh, the Dominican Republic. So um, the Hispanic, um, the Hispanic um, culture's food is also yummy good. Yum yum, good good stuff. So anyway, all right, I'm letting you go. Good luck, good luck, rest up. Um, check out some Yoga Nidra, as a matter of fact. Um, if I get a chance, I've been talking about that all season here and there. If I get a chance, I'm going to try to make a video um, doing a Yoga Nidra meditation. I can't promise it as usual, but I will try. Um, but it is the shite, let me tell you. Oh, my God. Anyway, later.